Hello. Today I wish to speak about an event I attended, a dance workshop called Love Empowerment Retreat. And an experience of love and healing that occurred within it. Mm. <clears throat> so today I attended this retreat starting at 10 in the morning. contained quite a few exercises, some of them warm-up exercises, some of them individual, some of them group-wise, and some of them like in particular pairs or trios. And there was one particular exercise that we did in pairs which was the... was it called the heart opening exercises? exercise? I believe so, heart opening. <clears throat> and we all had partners and I found my partner and she was quite experienced in this style of dance I believe and someone was going to start. <clears throat> someone would lead one person by taking their body and guiding it, allowing the body to fully surrender into trust. while the other person takes this body and takes guides it into opening the heart which is not a little or literal ripping up the skin here but rather a falling into trust which is strengthened by the Mm. Shifting, the moving, the allowing the different body parts to move, guided by trust, by surrendering, not knowing what is happening, but rather uh, allowing with trust, which I understand is an aspect of the heart. <clears throat> so we began and I we chose that that I would guide first, I would guide her. <clears throat> and I was somewhat nervous because I had did not remember having had done that exercise before. <clears throat> Um, yet we started and I felt somewhat clueless. I just put my hand on her shoulder and then the arm and I began to feel somewhat guided while moving around her body and like allowing her arms to move like this and like this and like this and like this. And a little bit of turn here, trying to shift, shift the body in some way. At some point, um, I thought, oh, laying down would be nice. It's a matter of like, completely, ugh, letting go. So I guided her to lie down, and she was completely lying down, and I let her go for a while, 
Then I was a bit clueless as to God of War, what will or know it. <laughs> now what do I do? And yet, um, <clears throat> the music in the moment guided me. And I continued finding ways to guide, finding ways to to see that she found that she found a, a, a way back to her heart. <clears throat> so I did that for the somewhere between five and ten minutes that it lasted. And at the end, as the music was ending, <clears throat> we were looking at each other very intently with our eyes. Not like super focusedly or menacingly or or staringly, but softly, rather just attempting to see what was there. And then it was a time for feedback. <clears throat> and she gave me feedback. And she said some words. She said some words that I... Oh, that I wrote down. <clears throat> because they felt powerful to me. Surprisingly powerful. She said, thank you, thank you for healing me, thank you for trusting me, <clears throat> you have no idea what this means for me now, especially from a man, <clears throat> and I'll continue reading on what my thoughts were, when she said this, a uh, buried part in me felt seen and sobbed. It felt seen, it felt real, acknowledged and like it was being seen, acknowledged explicitly. Perhaps like it has never felt acknowledged and seen before. Like its role, its energy, the focused attention it projects upon women so often so often misunderstood both by others and by myself had finally been validated verified vindicated she also said something along the lines of I see your big heart, I see the love that you bring into the world, that you are, that you gift to the world, and it truly struck, mm. a real part in me, I sobbed. I sobbed, I cried <clears throat> with her seeing each other I had no idea that I was healing <laughs> her or anyone I wanted to be a, a guide that helped her open. Hmm.
but being but being seen in an aspect that I'm that that even I was not sure. Ah, wonder turn off. Being seen in an aspect which even I was not sure that it provided value, and by this aspect, I. I I have not explicitly said it's an aspect of me that sees a woman and wishes to uh, to extend myself out to her, to give, to to uh, to offer, which I have interpreted so so often as I want a romantic relationship with this woman, or I want a sexual relationship with this woman. And which is not truly that. It's just a desire to give. To give, to gift. And as I understand it right now, it's a desire to gift love. Not necessarily romantic love, not necessarily sexual love, not necessarily any kind of any kind of particular love, just love. And some part of me felt that. I cannot say I actually understood it at, at, the, at the level of precision that I'm saying it right now. But it was felt. I felt it. And the fact that That it had been hidden for so long. No, the fact that it had been misinterpreted for so long, both by me as oh, the, then then I I must want something from this person, which is basically what a romantic relationship and a sexual relationship can be. Mm, taking something, I want something. I want to be. I want to be linked to you. And often that, the way in which I expressed that desire to love, or its misinterpretation, also being misinterpreted by the other person as most, very often a threat. A threat that, a threat of a relationship, a threat of this man offering something they don't want. Especially if it's offered in sometimes what felt like desperation. Like if there's a desire, this desire to love out to gift and it's powerful and it does not find a recipient and it does not find it, it does not find it, and it does not find it, it can turn into <gasps> a, a, such a desperate desire to love. And today I think I understood. I think I understand that dynamic. If I do have an instinct, a desire to love in its pure form, then I don't need to color it with any particular desire for myself or with any particular expectation that oh, this kind of 
outcome should happen. Oh, then we will become friends, or we will have a connection, or we might enter into some kind of romantic vortex. There's no need. There's no need. I'm saying this is... By saying this, I want to integrate that, to really feel it and believe it. Because the desperation of not finding a correct recipient for one's love can be very painful. So I wish to remember this. The second part of the exercise, I was guided and she guided me and I surrendered. She saw my feelings, she saw my hurt, she saw my desperation perhaps, perhaps she saw the the direction outward, the direction of me wanting to uh, 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 offer to the world while not remembering to redirect that into myself. I believe she noticed that, she observed that. And during this second part of the exercise, she guided me into self-love. It was It was genuine, sincere from her part. It was not an act. It was... Hmm. It was not an act. It was not veiled. It was not an action that was like, I will give care to you, but it will be sort of veiled in some uh, a little bit of aesthetic here or not trying to go too deep because it could be because it could be uh, offensive or, or like there were no veils, there were no veils, there were no no trying to hide what it was. It was a silent, sincere offering of love, of care, where she brought me to feel in my arms, in my chest, in my shoulders, in my back, that she gave me love. Like um, mothers is a 
closest comparison I can bring. Just pure, just understanding of the pain that is inside and knowing that there is truly no <laughs> solution for it other than love knowing and I, so I felt her care and I felt her care she, I felt I felt caresses on my face I felt seen I felt like fully seen like there was there was no part of me that was being ignored I was there as a full person I was being seen. And then at some point she took my arms several times and she placed them on my heart. And I knew I knew exactly what she was saying. I felt the message was <laughs> yes, you can love yourself. You can love yourself. And I knew that yes, that's the truth. That's the truth. Can I remember to do that? Can I remember to do that? I love. I love. I love. And I love others as well. But as we discussed later, one can only love others as one loves oneself. And so that makes me tr truly think and ponder. That as sincere, as true as the desire to love has been inside of me. It has only been able to give, to offer an incomplete version of love. Because my love for myself has not been complete. Love. It's what we humans can cultivate. It's the ability to see oneself and the other truly and through that seeing care attention is manifested pure the care of it and attention that we give to ourselves. That love. That. 
I believe is at least an aspect of love. That is what happened with me today. An experience of self-love. requires active remembering to shift one's habits, to shift one's patterns of thinking. <clears throat> Those patterns that either that, that place worth on certain parts of life and, and play and devalue others. It takes time to shift those perspectives. At least the habits for sure. And so I say to myself, remember. Remember self-love. Remember. Remember to self-love. At any step, at any time, at any place. It need not it need not be intrusive on the activities of daily daily life. It need not manifest as any particular action or posture or needing to like put my hands on the chest. Unless that's what it wants. Unless that's what I want to look at. That's what it feels like it's right to do. But merely the recognition that I am here that by my, that by my simple act of being here I have worth I have value and I have something to offer to the world feeling of care, the feeling that I care about this self, about this body and these emotions and these thoughts and that I care about them. And it doesn't need, mean that I necessarily need to appease all of them, but that I care about them. I care about this whole being. And perhaps even that I understand or at least feel that there is worth and a purpose beyond what is obvious to myself and to each person in this world. But in this context particularly to myself. Simply by feeling that, by connecting through our feelings, 
that is a practice of self-love. And if it manifests as actual physical care, as taking time to allow oneself to be free and completely surrender to anything, to give it care, to just relax, to not need to be held by expectations all the time, if that's what it manifests like, then let it manifest like that. Because feelings manifest as something. So that is, as I understand it, the practice of self-love. And now I believe that if we practice self-love, if I practice self-love, I will more effectively be able to love others. And the importance of that is simply the fact that I have a desire and oh, an impulse to love others in the world. And if it manifests in particular, or especially strongly to women, at least so far, then that is the impulse. It does not only manifest with women. If I practice self-love, I can more effectively love others. And I would like to effectively love others. Because that's one, what an inner impulse in me desires, strives for. That is the direction of the impulse. Thus, my being as a whole will feel more fully satisfied when it is able to place this love with clarity. With clarity and not with hesitant <clears throat> uncertainty of not knowing why I do it or or what do I want in return of having these images of expectations that this should that acts of love should expect. Expectations of love. No. True love does not have expectations. True love is not transactional. True love is a flow. Self love. The practice of self love helps us love more effectively. <clears throat> I 
And as it seems to me, many of us humans, if not truly all of us, have this desire to love. So I encourage all of us to practice self-love. as potentially wishy-washy, corny, or platitudinous, as it may sound. I believe it can help us grow not only individually which is the <laughs> the, the seeking source but rather also grow as the groups of humans that we are we are groups of humans. We live in this world together. I believe we will understand and get along together so much better if we learn to love one another. And through that, allow humanity to grow. <sighs> this is what I have to say on love and self-love.